If you're a dad, you're not afraid to work hard. Never give up. Never compromise. And the best dads always look for ways to get better. I'm looking for something to energize me. I'm looking for something to push me further. And I'm looking for something to go with these nachos. Dad Fuel, the energy drink designed just for dad. So I can finish the fight. So I can finish the race. So I can finish mowing the lawn. And later on, I might watch some golf. The fuel dads need to do the things dads do. Climb the highest peak. Go the furthest distance. Check the scores. Read the newspaper. Give amazing relationship advice. Why are you crying? You should really talk to your mother about that. Dad Fuel comes loaded with taurine, ginseng, and 100% of your daily recommended value of Hi Hungry, I'm Dad. I start every morning with the four Ds. Devos, donuts, Dad Fuel, down blanket. Breakfast of champions, baby. Now available in four bold flavors. Original orange, grow model raspberry, grow master mango, and I thought I told you to take out the garbage grape. You can't touch my passion. You can't touch my drive. And you definitely can't touch my thermostat. No way. So whether you're thirsty for victory or just plain thirsty. No, seriously, it's empty. Can I get another one? Dad fuel. Because I am fearless. Because I am unstoppable. Because the players on TV aren't going to yell at themselves. Come on! Throw the ball! Good morning, church. We want to thank you for joining us again this Sunday for worship. Uh, as you know, today's a very special day. It's one of my favorites as a father. Uh, it's Father's Day today. Uh, we're celebrating our dads. Uh, we're appreciating and thanking our dads for everything that they bring to our lives. And in order to do that this morning, I've asked some very special people to help me put a message together uh, for our dads. So we're going to go ahead and we'll share that with you now. Hola, papi. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. We love you. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Happy Father's Day. We love you very much. <laughs> we hope you have a great day. Happy Father's Day. Hope you have a great day. Happy Father's Day, Dad. <laughs> Happy Father's Day, Dad. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Happy Father's Day. Hope you have a great day. Happy Father's Day, Papa. Hey, Nancy. Did you have a message for Daddy? Oh, no. Oh. You wish Daddy a very happy first Father's Day? Oh. And you love him. Happy Father's Day. I love it when you play sports with me and encourage me to do better. Hi, Bobby. Happy Father's Day. I love it when you put me to bed with a hug and a kiss. Te amamos. We love you. Hope you have the best life you could ever live. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for all the work you do. My favorite thing about my dad is he makes waffles about me and he makes waffles for you. And he songs with me and and he and he comes say good night to me. He says good morning to me in the morning. A few things I like to to do with my dad are go camping, play basketball, and sometimes jump on the trampoline. I love my dad because he always helps me if I'm in need and he gives me hugs and kisses before bed. I love my dad because he plays with me a lot. I love my dad because he plays video games with me and he's really good at it. Our favorite thing about our dad is that he plays sports with us. My favorite thing about my dad is that he teaches me how to, how to go and swim without a life jacket. What's your favorite thing about daddy? Hmm? Oh! I like that about him too. Oh! Dad, we love you. I love you, Dad. We love you. Love you. We love you. Love you. We love you, Papa. You're the best. 
I want to thank all the kids who participated in that uh, and thank the moms as well for getting your kids to participate in that. Uh, but I know it's not easy to put yourself in front of a camera. And so thank you for doing that. And dads out there, I hope that you feel loved and appreciated. I know that I do uh, because I know how much some of my kids absolutely hate to be in front of a video camera. So thank you to my kids for being, being part of that. Um, we're going to go ahead and this morning, we're going to pray over our fathers and lay hands on them. Uh, but before we do that, I want to share a quick couple stories. First of all, I want to say happy Father's Day to my dad out there. Uh, I love you and I'm so thankful for you. Uh, and, I, and I want to share a couple stories about my dad uh, with you because I think it helps to illustrate the incredible importance uh, and value that fathers bring to our lives. Uh, the first story uh, is when I was about six or seven years old. I can't rem remember if I was six or seven, uh, but I was on an archery bear hunt with my dad. Uh, how many of you can start a sentence that way? <laughs> I was six years old on an archery bear hunt with my dad and we were walking through a cornfield um, he had his bow in his hand and, and I was struggling to see, obviously, because I'm in a cornfield. And so my dad tells me he'll never forget the moment in which uh, we, we snuck up and we got close enough. So he stopped walking because we were very close to the bear. And he looked down, and the corner of his eye, he could see something front walking between him and the bear, and it was me. Uh, I had continued to walk, <laughs> leaving my dad behind. Um, and, and the reason I share that with you and the, the reason I kept walking, trying to see this bear is because I had no fear in any way of anything. I was not afraid of anything in that moment, although I probably should have been uh, a little bit more careful, but I wasn't careful. and I wasn't afraid because I had my dad with me. And, and it's pretty cool to have a memory like that, uh, where I can be in a moment like that. And just to have that memory of having no fear. Uh, because my dad's there. He's my protector. Uh, he is the one who's going to care for me always. He'll do anything for me. I've always known that my dad is going to do anything for me, and he will always keep me safe and protect me. The second story about my dad is, is also, it's another hunting story. At the age of uh, 38, last year, uh, for about 14 years, I've actually been going on a, a wilderness backpacking hunt with my dad up into the mountains, and there's a lot of grizzly bears up there. And last year, I went up there for the first time uh, without my dad. It was the first year that he wasn't able to come with us. And, and I haven't really shared this with anybody, but uh, it was just a little bit different going to bed at night uh, with grizzly bears roaming the forest when I didn't have my dad up there with me. Uh, I'll actually add that even in my 30s here, my dad usually sleeps right beside the door. And I've always, I've never even shared this with him, but I have uh, so much comfort in the fact of knowing that uh, when, when or if a grizzly bear ever comes into our camp at nighttime, my dad's the closest one to the door and so he'll have to be the first one out the door <laughs> to scare that grizzly bear away. Um, I also get comfort knowing that I can outrun my dad when I'm up there but um, my point is this, my point is that even in my 30s uh, I still need and I still look to my dad uh, for safety, for comfort, um, for that provision, uh, for that kind of guidance and protection. Um, I value and cherish that and really am extremely lucky to have that in my life. And so all of you kids out there, all of us grown adult kids uh, out there, I just want to remind us this morning of how important uh, our dads are in our lives and how amazing it is to have them. Uh, along with that, I also want to add, before we pray this morning uh, and, and recognize the fact that not everyone out there this morning still has their dad with them. Uh, for some of you this morning, you've woken up or even leading up to today, it's, it's been hard and it's been challenging um, because your, your father is no longer with you. Some of you maybe have never really in your life had a father in your life. Um, and so I want to acknowledge that this morning. I want to say that we, I see you, uh, that we see you, uh, and we also want to pray for you this morning because we know that on a day where the whole world highlights fatherhood and how amazing it is to have these dads, uh, that it's really hard that you don't have that right now. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to pray right now over our dads, um, and we're going to pray over those who don't have their dads 
anymore. And so I'm going to ask all of you in your homes, if your dad is there with you, uh, that you can all please gather around your father. Let's lay hands on them as we pray. If you don't have a father there with you, I'm going to ask you to just hold out your hands this morning. Uh, Chelsea's offered to lead us in prayer. She's going to pray a blessing uh, over our fathers and, and even over those who don't have their fathers anymore. And so Chelsea will be leading us, but let's all hold our hands out uh, to figuratively represent that we are also uh, praying along with Chelsea with the words that she's praying. We're praying that over you this morning, dads, uh, and we're praying that over you, uh, those who don't have your dads with you. Um, and so let's go ahead. Chelsea's going to lead us this morning in prayer. Dear God, we thank you today for our fathers, for the biological fathers and for those who father by choice. I thank you, God, for the ways that you've worked in their lives, and I pray that you would give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation so they would know you better. Lord, may you be their center. May you be their anchor as they love and guide their children all through their lives. May you always be who they turn to for rest, for peace, and for wisdom. Lord, today I also lift up those who are hurting, those who have lost their fathers to death or illness, those who do not have the relationship that they desire with their fathers, those who long to be fathers and are waiting for that longing to be fulfilled, and for the fathers whose arms are empty and aching for children who are not with them. I pray that all those who are hurting, especially today, would bring their pain to you and you would be their comfort. Help them to know that they are seen and not forgotten and deeply loved by you. Thank you, God, that you are a good, good father. Thank you for the ways that you love and you care for us, your children. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, 
you're likely already aware of the fact that we have something else special planned today, and that's a special contribution for Zach Qantas. Uh, we're going to be doing that in just a few moments here, uh, and we are going to be pausing just like we would pass baskets around to take up an offering on a Sunday morning. We're going to pause and give you some time with your phone uh, or a computer to give either online or through an e-transfer. And uh, so you can go ahead and begin to prepare that. I'll remind you to make sure that you make a note in your contribution that it's for the special contribution or that it's for Zach so we know how to designate those funds. Uh, if you're not able to participate in that way right now, maybe you're watching on the phone, uh, your phone. Uh, don't worry about doing that now. You can do it when service ends. You can do it anytime later today. Don't feel like if you can't participate right now, you can't participate. Um, please please participate later on if you can't do so now. Uh, as you prepare for that, for the next few minutes, I just want to share a few things with you about Zach. Uh, the first thing I want to do is make an announcement, uh, and it's a sad announcement that as of June, as of this month, Zach's tenure as our youth pastor is coming to an end. Uh, Zach's actually going to be transitioning out of his role of youth pastor at Northern Hills Church. Uh, he's been serving as our youth pastor as a volunteer now for five and a half years years. And so as you can imagine, uh, we have some big shoes to fill. We have a gap in ministry to fill. Uh, we have some work to put in. We have some prayer to put in in order to be prepared for the fall. Uh, but our youth ministry is likely going to be looking a little bit different. And so we want to seek your prayers as leadership as we make plans for our youth uh, in September. Um, but we also want to spend a few minutes here in light of this announcement, in light of Zach's uh, time as our youth pastor coming to an end, uh, speaking about Zach for a little bit. I know, Zach, you're going to love this, right? Uh, let's just talk about Zach for a little bit. Um, I've actually asked some people uh, to help me with this. I haven't given them very much time, uh, but even without much time, uh, they've wanted to participate in this. And so I'm going to have some people help me now share a little bit about Zach with you. For me, Zach was in charge of the youth group about this he started doing it about the same time as we arrived, and while I know the youth group will continue, it will not be the same without Zach there leading it. Uh, he was always there to talk science fiction shows, comic books, while still finding a way to use those conversations to bring everyone back to whatever youth group focus was going on that day, whether it was a Bible study or just a fun day, he'd find some way to bring it back to God and back to what we were doing while still having fun. Hi, Zach. This is Frank, Caleb's dad. Uh, I just want to take this opportunity to thank you so much for all you've done for the Youth Fellowship. It's hard to believe that it's been over five years that uh, you've been doing this and uh, just want to say very much appreciate it for all the work you've done. Just a little bit of uh, uh, history. Um, a few years ago, me and Kayla was trying to find a fellowship that he can fit into and we tried uh, different churches and guess what? He stuck with you guys because uh, he feels very comfortable and accepted in this fellowship. So definitely you doing great things and wonderful things for the youth, especially for my son, Caleb. Uh, just want to say all the best uh, on your future endeavors. Um, and again, thank you so much. Thank you, Zach and Allison, for all the fun times we had at Youth Group and for teaching me about the Bible. Hey, Zach. Uh, I want to take a moment to acknowledge your uh, great dedication for the youth uh, ministry at church and your willingness to serve and to share the gospel with those uh, youth kids. Uh, it's, uh, it's really valuable for us as a family, and Eva had had great memories during last year. I encourage you to keep uh, that open heart for serving and looking forward for so many stories with those youth kids. Thank you very much, Zach. Hey, Zach, I just want to thank you for all the hard work you put in to do this youth group with all of us, and I really like the games that you, Allison, and Drew put together. Hey, Zach, just wanted to say thank you so much for all of the hard work that you put into the youth group over the years. I just watched you um, pour your heart into the youth. I watched the connections that you made, and I know that they learned so much about the Bible and that they had so much fun at youth group. Just want to say thanks so much, Zach. Everything you've done for us, even accepting me into the youth before I even was of age to join, because you let me join a year early. 
and it's honestly, this youth has been probably one of the most of the fun years of my life. Thanks for being a very funny and jolly guy. <laughs> Gonna miss ya. Hey Zach, I just want to thank you for everything that you've done in my life, for all the hugs, and teaching me some of the greatest things that I can use in my life. Um, I really appreciate giving me a safe place to go to and just being there. Good luck with being a father and I'm excited to see this new journey that you're about to take. I want to go ahead and add to what others have said and share a little bit personally myself. Uh, I met Zach in January 2014 at our very first service and what jumped out to me right away, what was very clear was Zach was a servant of God. That Zach was very passionate about serving and uh, he wanted to be involved and he wanted to do whatever he could to help the church grow. And this, it was just incredible to have someone like him and like Allison around in the early days of Northern Hills Church. Uh, what was also really clear to him was his passion and desire to shape the lives and faith of youth. And so by the end of the very first, he got involved in youth right away, but by the end of the first year, uh, he very eagerly took over the role of youth pastor at Northern Hills Church. And for five and a half years, Zach has been serving as a volunteer as our youth pastor. And so for almost the entire life of Northern Hills Church, Zach has been uh, building youth ministry in Northern Hills. And uh, I wish I could go through every story, uh, every name of every youth, uh, especially in significant moments in some of their lives uh, where Zach has been there, Allison has been there to provide uh, counsel, to provide comfort for them, to provide guidance for them. Uh, Zach has had an incredible impact on the lives of many youth over the last five and a half years. Zach, I hope you're aware of that. Uh, I hope you take some time to reflect on that and the names of some of the youth that you've tremendously impacted over the years. Uh, but one of the other big things that I've seen Zach and Allison succeed very well at doing uh, is building community. Uh, this is really important right from the get-go. Uh, as you can imagine with a bunch of youth who are very unlike one another, uh, who come from very different families in different parts of the city even, um, Zach and Allison set out to build community and they have done an incredible job and I know that every single youth that has been a part of that group would agree with that statement. Uh, that that's a place where they feel safe, they feel accepted, and they feel loved. Uh, what incredible thing to say about a youth ministry. And, and so I kind of want to give honor to Zach and to Allison for what they have built with the youth. Uh, Zach and Allison, we want to uh, thank you guys uh, you know, thanking you is really just not enough, but we want to thank you. Uh, we're honored to have had you serving in this role with us. Uh, we are so lucky to have had you uh, pouring yourselves into the ministry and into the lives of the youth of our church. And uh, we also want to bless you now. And so we're going to go ahead. We're going to take up our offering now. Uh, again, I'm going to leave some time here for you to give online. You can find a description, uh, or sorry, the link to our giving page in the description of this video if you want to go find that now. Uh, if you have a credit card, you can give that way. Uh, you can also send an e-transfer through your online banking uh, to finance at northernhillschurch.ca. And again, if you can't participate right now, please do so after service ends or later today whenever you're able to do that. Uh, as soon as this time of giving is over, we're going to go ahead and pray a blessing over Zach and Allison and over their new baby that's uh, expected here this fall. Let's pray over this family wherever you are. As I begin to pray, I ask that you hold your hands out um, to symbolize you're praying with me. Please play, pray with me as we bless this family and we praise and thank God for them. As soon as we're done praying over Zach and Allison and their baby, we're going to go ahead and praise God together.
I'm going to go ahead and ask you to join me now as I lead us in a prayer and blessing over Zach and Allison. Let's go ahead and pray, and then let's praise God's holy name. Uh, God, we are so grateful. We are so grateful to have had the honor and the privilege of having Zach and Allison pour themselves into the life of our church and into the lives of the youth of our church. We thank you and we praise you. It's not them this morning that we praise God. It's you. (laughs) We praise you for the ways you have uh, shown your glory and your presence through them. We thank you this morning and give you glory uh, for the ways in which you've uh, used them as your vessels at Northern Hills Church. What an honor it is that you've done so. We praise your holy name, Lord. Thank you for using them as your servants. And Lord, we pray over uh, this couple. We pray for Zach and for Allison, Lord, that you might lead them forward from here, giving them strength. Uh, Lord, we pray for their unborn child, and we pray for its health, uh, which for its safety, uh, nurture and care for it, even now, Lord, as it's growing and it's preparing And uh, and God, we pray over Zach and Allison as well as they prepare to become parents and to meet their young child. Uh, God, please, through your Holy Spirit, guide them and prepare them for this next big journey that they have in life together. Uh, Again, God, we are so grateful and we praise your holy name through Jesus. take the rest of our time here this morning to share with you something that's been stirring up within me over the last five to six weeks. Uh, What's been stirring up within me has actually been this feeling of emptiness. Uh, It's been almost this hollow feeling. It's been growing and growing to the point where I feel like I'm going to explode and need to fill that void. And I have begun. 
I'm going to share a couple passages with you which will help to explain why I've had this feeling of emptiness or hollowness. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says this to his disciples. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And Jesus in John 13 says to his disciples, A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you love one another. Jesus says that we are the light of the world. He says we're like a city that's up on a hill that can't, that can't be hidden. Uh, he says to shine our light into the world, uh, to make him known. He says that we are to love one another. You are to love me and I am to love you in the same way Jesus loves us. In the same way Jesus went to the cross and died for us, we are to love one another. This is the way he says that people will know we are his disciples. Uh, it is intrinsic to the nature of being a disciple of Jesus Christ to pour ourselves out for the sake of others, to serve those around us, to love one another in this supernatural way uh, that makes it clear and evident that we're disciples of Jesus. This is what it means to live as a disciple. And so over the last little while, it has become more and more clear how much I'm missing that. Uh, that, that is the emptiness that I've had growing inside of me as I've been un unable to be with all of you and serving along with you. And that's uh, even more evident in the fact that over the last two years in June, we've been gearing up. This has been a time of excitement over the last two years, hasn't it? Preparing for our day camps and for teams from churches in the United States to come partner with us and to be on mission together in these communities. It's been an exciting time in June, the last two years. And unfortunately, right now, we've had to cancel our camp for the summer. And that's just caused this void in my life. And truly, I do hope that actually you've had a similar feeling uh, of missing this, of missing uh, this anticipation of God doing something. Uh, when we're together, when we're serving with one another. And, and I want to try to remind us and inspire us from what we've done in the past in order to fuel us moving forward. And so to do that this morning, I want to share with you uh, the videos of our two summer camps that we had last year. Last year, we had over 80 kids, that individual kids that attended two different camps. And uh, we had two different teams, one from Ohio, one from Kentucky that came and served alongside us. And if you were a part of those, I don't need to really remind you probably of how awesome it was to be on mission with them in these communities and to partner with people uh, for the kingdom of God. It was amazing. Uh, so I want to I want to inspire us and remind us of how exciting and fun that was. And then I'll have a few words uh, in order for us to move forward from here. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again Increase in us we pray Unveil why we're made Come set our hearts ablaze with hope Like wildfire in our very souls Holy Spirit come invade us now We are your church power in us. We seek your kingdom first. We hunger and we thirst. We refuse to waste our lives. For you are our joy and prize. To see the captive hearts released. The hurt, the sick, the poor at peace. We lay down 
group camp is probably all the games we play and all the prizes and everyone gets awards at the end of each day. My kids love coming here every morning. They're always excited to leave the house. They talk about some of the values you talk about here, like teamwork and compassion, and just they're having a good time when they come. They have fun, and it's cute watching all the drills they do, and they're actually learning good soccer skills too in the meantime. We signed up last year, and of course we'd sign up again. We enjoy it every year, so it's a great opportunity, and we love that you guys volunteer your time and help out the kids and do these programs because they really appreciate it. Build your kingdom here, let the darkness fear, show your mighty hand, heal our streets and land. Canadians is you call it the washroom and we call it the bathroom. Two, three, are the champions! I close my eyes and colors fly. There's no hiding from your grace. I can't deny your heart for mine. And it's unrelenting chase. I was on the edge of deception Caught up in my own hesitation Until your love took over me So I let go and I let love Show me life like it's supposed to be On a wasted, you're a wasted All the freedom I'll ever need Now I'm alive
hope that was encouraging for you to watch again. And I hope it helped to remind you of the amazing things God accomplished through us when we focused ourselves and united ourselves on mission for him. I also hope that it inspires and challenges you moving forward this summer. Uh, as we look back to see the amazing things God did through us as we focused ourselves on mission for him, I challenge you to think of the ways uh, that God might be looking to do amazing things through you this summer as you focus yourselves on mission for him. And I'll remind you once more of the words of Jesus in Matthew 5 and in John 13. You are the light of the world. You are like a city on a hill that can't be hidden. Go and shine your light in the darkness. Make his name known in dark places. Love your brothers and sisters in Christ in the same way that Jesus loves you. In the same way Jesus died for you. Love your brothers and sisters in Christ. I challenge you to consider this summer, as we aren't able to have our bigger ministry planned as a church on mission, think of some ways this summer that you can be on mission for God, that you can bring glory to the name of God. Think of some ways that you can, if we can't serve in our traditional ways through this time, what are some ways that you can serve God? Maybe on your own, maybe with your spouse, maybe even with your kids. What are some ways that you can become a light in darkness? I, and I challenge you this summer to find a one way, even if it's just one new way that you can be a light in darkness. Look for a way, even this week, just begin to, to consider, pray about it. What's a way you can be a light in darkness? And also, what's a way that you can love your brothers and sisters in Christ? There's some things that have been missing and lacking uh, since all of this has changed and happened and we haven't been able to be together as a church. And I think one of those things that is extremely lacking is our ability to love one another, support one another, encourage one another. And so, but, but that doesn't mean there are no ways. I really challenge everyone this summer to find a way that you can encourage or build up someone in their faith. Uh, be in prayer about it. Be in thought about it. And when God places that person on your heart, Please go and act. Let's seek out from God who it is that he wants us to either bring his light into or love. And then let's go. I'm going to go ahead and conclude this time this morning by sharing a new song with you. It's actually a song that I introduced back in January. And so if you do know this, go ahead and sing along with me. Uh, but even if you don't know this song, let's spend the next few minutes just in prayer and reflection upon Matthew 5 and John 13 and what our response might be. Uh, I want also for this song to help prepare our hearts and our minds for communion. And so following this song, I will lead us in the taking of the emblems. You can have those prepared uh, for then. Sent from the Father you came Light of the world in the darkness Savior you show us the way To lay down our lives for the broken Carry the weight of all our sins
Take in communion together now. The body of Jesus Christ, the light of the world, broken for you. May you love one another in the same way that he loved you. In the blood of Jesus Christ, the light of the world, shed for you. May you love one another in the same way that he loved you. service now by spending time in prayer in our individual homes. We encourage you now to spend the next little while with God in prayer. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next Sunday.